Hello everyone, I'm Fred Green, Vice President of Product with Martin Guitar. Hi, Skip Belts, Director of Product Management with Martin Guitar. Skip, Thanks. good to see you buddy. Been a while. Likewise, yeah. Well, did you survive the snow yesterday? I did for the five minutes it hit. Looked like we were going to get about 12 inches and then it stopped. Well, we're not in Anaheim anymore, that's for sure. Yeah, I miss it. Yeah, me too. Well, we're here to talk about the David Gilmore uh, signature models, uh, both the 12 string and a six string model. Uh, so we want to thank everybody for coming in. We want to ask you to go ahead. If you have questions, to start typing those questions in now. We're going to get to those later uh, in the presentation. So the more you get in now, the quicker we'll get to them uh, later in the presentation. So right off the bat, let me give you a, a brief run by of what these guitars are. They are sinker mahogany 35 style herringbone six string guitar beautiful piece 25 four scale uh, sort of inspired by dave's original uh 35 1969 uh, d35 that is so famous and was sold at christie's auction um, and we also have a d28 or d35 excuse me d35 12 string uh, sinker mahogany also uh, 12 string, except it's on a 24 9 scale, so a little shorter scale, uh, like some of our 12 strings happen to be. Mm -hmm. So that's the basics of what these guitars are, what makes them special. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of the specs as we get going. Um, as I said, and, and these are based on Dave's famous 35s that he wrote so many songs on. And, um, and we can't forget the, the story behind that is, um, you know, David was walking down to the Music Row, if, if it were called that in Manhattan, outside of Manny's Music, right. found a guy playing that 35, and the story goes he bought it right off the guy on the street, so it was used to start with and became the guitar that he fell in love with and wrote many of his songs throughout his career on. Now, that, that's a great point. I mean, I think I read an interview, Skip, where, where Dave says he's probably written more songs on that D35 than any other guitar he owns. Yeah, so crazy. That, that is crazy. Now, that guitar sold at Christie's auction for million dollars, right? Yeah, Just million a ninety five thousand dollars. I mean that's that that's unbelievable all by itself. And I think the the twelve string also sold at that same auction, am I right? Yeah, around five hundred thousand. Five hundred grand, that's right. So impressive numbers shows you what he what he's brought to music in general to have to be able to command such a price. Yeah. Amazing. Well Listen, the value of a Martin guitar, you write some good songs on it, it's a pretty good investment going forward. If you buy something outside on the street and turn it into a million bucks, not bad. And of course, that all goes to his charity uh, at that particular time. So, how did this guitar come about? Well, the main way it came about was we were working with a team at Westside, Mark Denays, and he was in touch with Phil Taylor, who is David's tech. Right, and it was actually Phil who approached David about the idea of doing a signature model with us, and, and they started having that conversation. And then, of course, that was relayed back to us through our distributor, Westside, and Mark Denays. And of course, when somebody comes to you and says, "Would you be interest, interested in doing a Dave Gilmore signature model?" Um, yeah, you're, you're jumping out of your seat. Because, get your blood flowing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Get your blood flowing. There's a handful of guys who are, who are Martin uh, artists, famous Martin artists, and Dave Gilmore's on that Mount Rushmore of those artists. Without a doubt. That you would love to have that we haven't worked with in the past. So the honor was certainly ours uh, to go ahead and do it. And so we started to put together some specs and, and trade some ideas going back and forth. Um, so in the end, we, we sent some some prototypes over to David uh, through the intermediaries there, just trying to kind of guess and poke around a little bit about what he wanted. And in the end, we ended up sort of on a on sinker mahogany, which was a choice that none of us really expected this project to turn, as we were thinking, oh, he's gonna wanna do a recreation of his 35, uh, his 6935, which was obviously a rosewood guitar, because most 35s obviously have been rosewood up to this point. And that's why we were so surprised, because the, the D35, everything he's been playing for was, was rosewood basically for so long, and he says, 
while I really love that sink or mahogany, right. you, the pictures that you're seeing isn't uh, just Fred's vacation home area. <laughs> I wish. That's uh, down down near Belize. Uh, look it up on a map. But sink or mahogany is it, it, the tone that comes from the guitar is just amazing. And what the folks do down there is they actually go out and onto the river and they dive down, they find logs, they come back up, they get ropes and chains and these huge balloons and they attach it to the log and they raise that log up and then begin the process over a couple of years of procuring that, dry, taking out all the moisture from the log. It's just an amazing process. You can look it up. These are photographs of some folks that we had go down and accompany them in finding some of the logs that are going to eventually make their way to Martin Guitars. And the fact that, that David found that is his choice just really, really intrigued us. And when we built the guitars and played them for ourselves the first time, we were blown away. And Go ahead, Fred. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I, I think the original, we sent them, at one point we'd sent them three guitars pretty close to the same guitars but just different back and sides. We had a rosewood guitar, we had a, a standard mahogany guitar, we had the sinker rosewood guitar, I mean the sinker mahogany, excuse me, and the reply back was sinker mahogany, hands, hands down. down, wasn't even close. That was Dave's David's response back regarding the guitars. And I can understand why when you when you play the guitar with the, with the sinker on it, it it, it just has a, a little more um, what is it, immediacy to the tone is what, the way I would describe it's it. It's crisp. It's, it's really it's a, crisp. Yeah, it's a little crisper. It's a little denser, which would explain probably why it sank to begin with. Uh, it, it's a little bit more dense than traditional uh, mahogany at that point. Now, what else made this really different, Skip, was the finish because we did something on the finish here that we haven't done on any other signature models. And, and his creative side it really is what intrigued me through the process yes, yes and it it makes the guitar look like it's 70 years old when you when you're going to get yours if you ordered one right out of the box because we went with a vintage gloss process and we use that and perfected it with our authentic pieces and what we do is we take a finish and then we use um a process to sort of work that back and the shine is somewhere between what you would know as a satin guitar or a full, full gloss guitar. It's right in the middle right. and it really just makes it feel like like an old friend, like it's been a partner with you for a while right out of the gate. Now this is our original finish that goes back to the 20s and the 30s. Yep. We use this currently on our authentic guitars right now. So this is a, a very vintage look on this finish and we haven't done this finish on anything outside that authentic line so this is special for for david because i i remember we were having this conversation at the time skip he really wanted something that had an older yeah. look to it it didn't look too overly shiny or too new in that sense and we were lucky enough to to get a lot of firsts working with david because um, this is the first d35 that that i know of that we've done in Sinker Mahogany. We've done some custom things, some right. special projects, um, right. but this is the first 35, and certainly the first, to your point, Fred, vintage gloss guitar out of the Authentic series. And and it has some friends. It's got from Modern Deluxe right. platform, which is the carbon fiber bridge plate. That just adds an extra elevated ring to the guitar. Now that's only on the six string, the 12 string, has a maple bridge plate for strength purposes because of the string tension you get with a 12 string. Um, but that carbon fiber bridge plate really makes a significant difference. And the top is Adirondack spruce with a vintage tone system. That's our tour of faction process we've been doing, geez, for about, about seven years or Correct. so right now. And the, the braces on the six string are also Adirondack and tour as well. Correct. The Tw 12 string yeah. has a Carpathian spruce right. top. He liked that for the choice on the 12 string. And, and again, it just these subtle differences that he hears just shows you what kind of what kind of player he is. It's like somebody that it's like a sommelier of guitar building, right. which is what made it really fun to see some of these things. And 
and then you know you've got the stamp that you'll see on the back of the headstock our vintage guitars or back in the day as they say our early guitars used to always have a stamp that stamp is very cool and I thought that was an interesting choice by David to, to want to do something that was very vintage you know we, we always ask people when we're working with artists you need to personalize the guitar make it personal to you put something on it that lets people know it's yours without going over the top so to speak uh, being too obvious because nobody really wants to play a guitar that has somebody else's big name on the fingerboard in a, in a too large a way um, and, and David's choice here I thought was super tasteful uh, hearkening back to those vintage days where Martin would print New York or something on the back of the peg head and to have it say D35 David Gilmore there um, as you mentioned earlier Skip probably the most fascinating thing about this guitar was was David's uh, desire to not simply recreate something that had already been done, to, to really take it and continue the process of creating and making a new piece of art and making it personal to him, uh, something that would drive creativity going forward as opposed to just uh, a replica. First time that I know of that, that we've altered this stamp it's yeah. done in such a tasteful way right. that it still feels Martin. And that's what was really fun for me along this whole process because we've, we've done some things and we've taken some requests over the years. And, and when it doesn't feel like what is from Martin, it feels a little odd. And this yeah, inauthentic. One, yeah, inauthentic, this one right. felt authentic through the whole process. Right. They had those aged tuners on there, which I thought gave it a nice, a nice vibe. It's, a super shiny tuner on there would be a little weird. Now, what we're looking at here is is the next shape. And this was probably one of the pieces where we had the most back and forth uh, with David in his camp and the choices he was making. And it's, it's very difficult to, to get a neck shape, a personal neck shape correct without actually sending samples. So we did send a lot of samples. So what you're seeing here is in the blue, uh, which is our full thickness neck, and what we ended up with on, on David's guitar, which is in the red. And you can see the depth is very similar to full thickness, but the profile is quite a bit different. It has a little more V to it, uh, a little less cheeky. This, we, this is insider, it's a good way of putting it. It's insider baseball guitar talk yep. here, uh, the way we look at necks in the factory. So it's a little less cheeky to add that V, but it gives you a little more meat up along the edge of that fingerboard. So that really does make the neck feel a little, a little fatter because it is a 111 16 neck, like a lot of 35s um, at the nut. So it still gives you that nice And it's feel. important to say that when you look at that picture, the non-guitar player would be like, that doesn't look like much. Oh, you but to it. the guitar player, especially the seasoned professionals, it. you see that, that's, a, that's a big change in your hand. It, it's, and you know what? It's really comfortable it is not an uncomfortable or overly fat neck it it's it's just right for me now I, I tend to like a little bit bigger vintage necks personally full thickness yeah I, I I tend to enjoy playing those guitars especially on dreadnoughts but sometimes a neck that's too thin on a dreadnought can just doesn't give me the right vibe but it really works on this guitar I, it's behind me right now I, I've been, I was playing it earlier <laughs> and it feels good trust me it feels really good um, so, as you see here, this is the label that's on the inside. Uh, you see it does overlap a little bit there. Th there's a story behind the label uh, and how, how that fits into the guitar. And we, we sent David some of these labels uh, just in a normal square like we always do. And Dave, David has a nice, good, bold signature, which we really appreciate, and which you think is one of the key points on this guitar, is yeah. having David Gilmore's signature on a guitar, which is very rare. Um, so because the signature is so wide, as you can see, it kind of goes outside the line. Well, we're not thinking so clear in here because we're very excited to have this project. It's got to fit inside that wedge. And so they're a little wide, so we had to sort of hand fit each label inside the guitar to sort of try to get it to fit in there. But hey. it's another first. We, we like the way it came out, right? I, listen, it makes it personal. That's what makes it a cool piece. Well, it's got a second bridge on the guitar, right? It bridges the 
the back bracing, right? <laughs> there you go. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. I like that. Just get it just right. Yeah. So it's, it's all those little tiny pieces that have to come together to, to create the right recipe and, and, and to, and listen, the key piece for all of this stuff is it's really not about Martin Guitar. In all honesty, uh, it, it's a privilege on our part to be able to put this instrument Absolutely. out, right? That's the thing. We're very proud to just be a part of the project. But the, this guitar is really about guitar players. Here's one of the greatest, most influential guitar players of all time, and he's kind enough to come to us and say, hey, I, I want to I make something new that says something about who I am as an artist today. And he wanted to use us as a vehicle to do that. And to be able to help him get that recipe right, to get it just, just so where he's happy and where he's comfortable, um, I mean, it's just an honor. You don't get to work with with no. people. I mean, he's in no. usually in the top three when those lists come out. They they always redo them. Uh, top 100 guitar players of all right. time. You you don't have to scroll down the page very far at all to see David's name. He's usually in the top three. I mean, wish you were here. Written on this guitar, uh, on a D35, on a Martin. Uh, Shine on you, crazy diamond. Yeah. I mean, the, the beginning riff to that was written on the, on that 12 string, that D28 12 string of his. I mean, these are the soundtrack of your life. So, I wore I, I wore a couple of Pink Floyd records out myself. So, um, <laughs> we all have. it was certainly personal for me to to be able to be a part of it. And, and can't, we can't we can't say enough. Fred and I have talked about it a bunch. Our our friends at West Side, Mark Denae's, um Phil, David's Guitar Tech, all of those folks that have helped us to do this project. Right. We're not going to forget about it. It was really fun. So, um, Skip, I think it's time we go ahead and uh, see if we could take a few questions, do a little Q&A here. Sure. That's all right with you. So yeah. I'm going I'm to read off some questions. Uh, someone is asking, is there any unique case candy or cool stuff that comes with a guitar? Well... I think we're asking. I think we're asking the guys to put together like uh, a certificate to come with the piece. Yeah, uh, not nothing that has been finalized, but right. we we are in conversations about what we we might be able to do that um, could be a surprise to the end consumer. And and those things are uh, tough logistically to to work out, especially when it's domestic and international. But um, we will post that if we're able to because we need David's permission and it needs to be just right to be able to do that gotcha and it'll be a while a little while before we're able to ship them so hopefully we can slide into home with something like that all right so I have a question here from Sebastian because how is it to work with an artist to make a signature guitar and why are some of these limited production you take the first part I'll t take the okay. second part um, how is it to work with an artist to make a signature guitar uh, I will say this, having worked with quite a few, it depends on the artist. Some artists are uh, very, very particular about they want, what they want, and David certainly falls in that category. It was very, very hands-on. I've gotten a lot of questions about why did you make this choice or why did you make that choice uh, regarding some design choices on the guitar, and my answer is simple. I didn't make those choices. David made those, those choices. We simply presented options and, and help him explore what he could do. And I think that's the case for, for a lot of artists. Uh, like I said, some other artists are a little less hands-on and they want you to make recommendations to them. But in this particular case, David was supremely in charge of what we were doing. Yeah, and James, uh, we have another question from James, but I thought the second part of that previous question was why the limited edition Correct. and James will ask us how many Gilmore units are you producing? So. Well, the Sinker Mahogany, it's it's unique. It's hard to get. And it only comes by after a, an enormous amount of work and effort is put in to getting those logs out. It also doesn't all turn into buildable guitars. So we only had a certain amount. And we want to we don't want to build so many that everybody in the world could get them. We want to make it 
a little bit of a prestige point for for you to own some exclusivity yeah some exclusivity that's a great word so how many it's 250 250 total and it's based on how we're going to get the orders so if we are making these numbers up but if we get 150 orders for six string and 100 for 12 string that's how many will be produced gotcha. and we'll put that on the website after we get through all that but really the the total number came down to exclusivity as fred um, pointed out and also we had to keep an eye on how much sinker did we have to offer right so material is a big issue there well another question is uh is david getting number one yeah we Martin Guitar has a prototype of each, and then David is getting number one and number two. So he'll have the first six string and the first 12 string. Gotcha. Well, it's only fair, Skip. It's only yeah. fair. Yeah. It's the least we could do. It's the least, really. literally the least we could do. Uh, Kate asks, how many versions did you create for David's approval? Hmm. I... I think we actually we've created quite a few pieces and parts. Yeah, the, well, the customs that we sent over were kind of like that. Right. But but honestly, and I try to keep my hands down on camera, but I'll do this for the camera. Um, when we sent them over, we had our fingers crossed, like we always do. We we put uh, our heart into the process, and the folks in manufacturing um, help us to execute that, and everyone in the plant that has a hand in it. And then we, we hope that the artist likes it. Okay. We sent over the first version of the six and 12, and he loved them. Yeah. So really, I guess we we only sent two. All right. One six string and one 12 string. So let's see. There was a question up by Victor earlier that said, how long does it take to build a guitar, build one of these guitars? What is, what is the process time? Well, the folks in sales would say too long, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it, it, it takes us about 10 to 12 weeks yeah. to, to build a guitar in, in this capacity. I think that's fair. So Tony asked, can you go in the carbon fiber a little bit more? Was that per David's request? Yeah, uh, the carbon fiber is something that, um, you know, Tim Teal does and Ramin Shai, Shai Egan do a lot of design work for us. Yeah, and they're our, our key designers. Key designers, and they came up with, they're always looking for new materials, and our R&D folks as well, and they found that if we sandwiched carbon fiber, took two pieces of carbon fiber, put a piece of Adirondack in the center, um, it would really make that bridge plate really stiff. And when you do that, the overtones that you get, the ringing, um, the sustain is incredible when you when you play a G. You pick a little out, yeah. It, it just it just rings and rings and rings, and um, that's that's why we used it. We're, we're always looking at alternative materials, and this was one that the Tim and the folks came up with that was really incredible. Right, um, and I also want to say that yes, it is David who picked out these particular. Uh, this feature, in other words, by that I mean we sent him some guitars, and some had this bridge plate, some did not, and he chose the guitars with the bridge plate. So sonically, you can he, hear it. He was picking those guitars out um, himself. Skip, uh, my computer's down. Right, said, can you read okay. the next yeah, question? Yeah, sure. Um, so, does the carbon fiber from James alter the tone significantly? I would, I would say that it adds. It adds to the tone. I don't really like to use the word alter because it has it, to me, it feels negative. It enhances the tone significantly. Whatever that guitar is going to give you based on the tone woods that were used, is it rosewood, is it mahogany, um, is it maple, does it have a spruce top, is it an Adirondack spruce top, Carpathian, whatever those combinations give you, a carbon fiber bridge plate adds to it and enhances it. Yeah, and our testing has shown that it definitely will give you some extra volume there. So I'm back up here, Skip, I'm gonna say, uh, so what strings are used on the model and does the string choice make a difference? So we're using lights per David's request and it lights, they play easier. It's lights, mediums play a little stiffer 
you know, beyond right. that, even stiffer. But the the sound isn't impeded by using lights. If you can use mediums on it, if you want, but David's choice were lights, and that's what it'll come strong with. Right. So uh, next question up is uh, David testing the guitars that are made during the manufacturing process, or is there a two-way communication? <laughs> to make sure that you'll achieve the best result possible with the first try. Wouldn't it be cool if David was hanging out with us um, that once cool. this pandemic is over and we've we've got him out at final inspection, I would have loved checking it. him? <laughs> In this particular case- We won't get much else done, right? We were, there was a little bit of a hunting and pecking going on, so to speak, on these models. In other words, he had some ideas, some things we wanted to try, some things he wanted to try. We made some samples. Those samples were sent to him. They were tested, they were played, they were, uh, messed around with a bit. Um, obviously, they're set back. We make some changes. Some other pieces go out, and and we we listen. We would have loved to have gotten it right the first time, but uh, it, unfortunately, it didn't work out quite that way. Yeah. So hopefully, um, next time we'll be able to do it that way. I don't know if there'll be a next time, but so we got we got pretty close. We we were pretty close right out of the out of the bag of what he was looking for. And, and thankfully the artists that we work with generally trust that once we figure out the final specs of the guitar that they trust that we've been building guitars for a few years and we'll get it right after we know what to build right, right. and Andy Ashworth asks are there uh, what's the estimated dates for delivery mm. um, these guitars should start showing up in the marketplace in March yeah that's so what we're thinking, March domestically, probably April, um, internationally. And they're asking about the cost. So these, these instruments are $54.99, I believe. Right, $54.99. I've had a lot of questions. Up. Why the same cost for both? There's a, a few subtle that is a differences. That's a good question, Skip. A few subtle differences. The 12 string has a Carpathian spruce top, a maple bridge plate. The six string has an Adirondack top with right. VTS. So they balance themselves out. Generally, in a 12 string, is there's a little more involved in building those, and they're usually a little higher price. So we felt we felt that we could keep the same price on both of them because of the, the subtle differences. Gotcha. Marco Guzman, in, ter and in terms of marketing, what is the decision to make a signature guitar? And why did you choose David Gilmore, for example? And I, I think it's, it's clear here, Skip. We covered David Gilmore, right? The why? Yeah, I mean... There's, there's, like I said, there's a handful of guys who we haven't had the opportunity to work with that we wanted to work with. Uh, you know, it's the Neil Youngs of the world, it's the David Gilmores of the world. Yeah. And when one of those guys shows interest and they're ready to do it, uh, we're, we're not gonna waste any time. We're, we're, we're jumping at this chance to go ahead and work with these legends. These guys absolutely. are absolute legends. And they just don't do commercial ventures very often. And so you just, you're, you're not going to pass that opportunity up. Okay, so I believe. That was our last question. That was our last question, Skip. I, I've enjoyed this. This was fun. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. It, it was as hopefully fun for you. It was fun for us always yeah. to, to talk to you guys. It's good to get out of the house. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for showing up. Enjoy the rest of your week.